We would like to solve this differential equation by separation of variables, but before doing so, we would like to rewrite this term. So let's take a little bit of an aside and recall one of the common properties of exponents. We all know that e to the power of, let's say, a plus b can be rewritten as e to the power of a multiplied by e to the power of b. So with that property in mind, let's take a look at what we have. We have e to the power of negative 2x plus negative y. Notice what we've done there. Instead of writing it as a subtraction of y, we have instead written it as the addition of a negative y. That, of course, is the same thing. So with that rewrite in mind, we can actually rewrite this entire expression as e to the power of negative 2x multiplied by e to the negative y. So that's what we're going to do in rewriting that last term of the differential equation. So we have rewritten that last term in the equation. We've colored it in red to emphasize what we have done. And now if we look carefully, we can see that e to the negative y is a common factor in each term on the right-hand side. And because it is a common factor, we can factor it out. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll have e to the negative y multiplied by the quantity 1 plus e to the negative 2x. Now, in the spirit of separating variables, what we're really trying to do is gather all of the y terms to the left side and the x terms to the right side. So to get the x terms to the right side, perhaps the next move we can make is to multiply both sides of this differential equation by dx. This allows us to cancel the dx out on the left-hand side. Perhaps our next move would be to multiply both sides of this equation by e to the positive y. And we're going to talk about why that would be effective. If we do that, we would have this e to the positive y times this e to the negative y. Now, of course, we know that we would add those powers, so we would end up with e to the power of 0, but e to the power of 0 is just 1. So basically, this term right here becomes a 1, and we can cancel it out. In a similar manner, we could actually multiply both sides of the differential equation by e to the negative x. So let's make a little bit of room for that on the right-hand side. And we can see why that's effective because similarly, we would have e to the positive x times e to the negative x right here. Those terms would become e to the zero, which is just one. So they effectively cancel out as well. So this is looking good. We have all of the y's on the left side as well as all of the x's on the right side. Why don't we take that e to the negative x and just distribute it into the parentheses? That way, the right-hand side becomes e to the negative x Plus, now when you multiply e to the negative x and e to the negative 2x, you're going to add those powers, so you'll get e to the negative 3x. And over on the left-hand side, we have, and we're just going to rewrite the order a little here, we can write it as y times e to the y dy. So we've done it. We've separated the variables. All the y's are on the left-hand side. All the x's are on the right-hand side. Next, we need to integrate both sides of this equation. So we will integrate the left side and integrate the right side. Perhaps we'll attack the right side first. It's a little easier to integrate it. Another little aside, we might want to remember that when you're integrating e to a constant x with respect to x, that integral, and this is probably from calculus 1, would equal 1 over the constant times e to the constant x. So with that rule in mind, if we look first at this term right here, we're going to integrate it. We have e to the negative 1x. So when we integrate that, we would have 1 over negative 1 times e to the negative 1x. Now, of course, 1 divided by negative 1 is just negative 1. So we might want to rewrite that as just a negative e to the negative x. We don't even have to write that little 1 right there. So we have negative e to the negative x for that first integral. And then for the second integral, we're going to follow the same procedure. We're going to have plus, and then we'll have 1 over the constant that's in front of x. That's a negative 3. And then we have e to the negative 3x. We can clean this up just a little bit because we are adding a negative fraction. So we can just write that as a minus 1 third times e to the negative 3x. And then on the right side, you will always add this arbitrary constant of integration. So don't forget to do that. So we've integrated the right side. It's all done. Now we have to talk about the left side. The left side's a little more challenging because we have the product of y and e to the y. And because we have a product of two separate functions, basically, we're going to have to use an old technique from calculus 2 known as integration by parts. So this is just another little aside. And let's recall that when you're integrating by parts, you're going to let u 
equal typically the first function here. So the first function is going to be y. If you were a little bit unclear as to whether you should let u equal y or let u equal e to the y, well, the rule of thumb states that you always want to let u equal the function whose derivative becomes simpler. So for example, if I take the derivative of y, I'm going to get 1. Whereas if I took the derivative of e to the y, I would get e to the y. So the derivative of e to the y does not become simpler, but the derivative of y certainly does. So we have du dy is equal to 1, and if you multiply both sides of that equation by dy, you could see that du is equal to dy. So that's half of our little template here. We need the other half in integrating by parts. We will let dv equal the remaining part of our integral, which in this case was e to the y dy. Now on this side of the template, we're not going to be differentiating, we're going to be integrating. So the integral of dv is v, and the integral of e to the y with respect to y is e to the y. So once you have all four of those parts, you're going to be plugging in them into the following equation. Again, this is from Calc 2. It's u times v minus the integral of v times du. So that's what we're going to put on the left side here. Here we go. We're going to start out, and again, we're following this formula here. We're going to take our u, which was y, and multiply that by v, which we determined to be e to the y, minus the integral of our v, which again is e to the y, times our du, which we determined to be dy. Okay, great. So now we can finish integrating the left side by performing this little integral right here. That one's easy because we know that the integral of e to the y is again e to the y. And so there we have it. Some teachers might allow you to leave it in this form. Other teachers might want you to solve this for y. So if we're going to solve this for y, then we're going to have to go to the left side and notice that we have a common factor here of e to the y. So we'll factor out e to the y. That would leave us with y minus 1 on the left side. We want to get rid of this e to the y so we can use our trick from earlier. We could multiply both sides by e to the negative y. On the right side, we'd have to make sure we put that all in parentheses like this. On the left side, e to the negative y times e to the positive y is e to the 0, which is just 1, so those effectively cancel out. And then finally, to solve for y, we would just, of course, add 1 to both sides of this equation. That cancels the minus 1 on the left side. So there would be the solution to the differential equation solved for y, and this is indeed the final answer.